We're glad that you've joined us. We're with Dr. John Tuliatis, and we're talking about uh, bariatric procedures that are performed. And so if you will, tell us what are some of the types of surgical procedures uh, performed specifically for weight loss? Right. Well, there's multiple procedures. Uh, the three most common in the U.S. are the sleeve gastrectomy, the laparoscopic gastric bypass, or Roux-en-Y gastric bypass is another name, and the lap band, which is used to be very popular about seven years ago. It's kind of gone on a favor now in, in favor of the gastric sleeve. So I think a lot of folks maybe watching at home may associate weight loss surgery with bypass surgery. So if you will explain to folks who may be familiar with the term but don't really understand what it involves or what it means, explain to them what is bypass surgery. Right. Well, the gastric bypass is pretty self-explanatory really. When you, once you see the anatomy, we're bypassing the majority of the stomach. Uh, it does require some rewriting of the intestines We'll make a very small pouch and we'll bring the small bowel limb up and sew it to that pouch. Excellent weight loss. Uh, there is some malabsorption, which is maybe why there's a little bit more weight loss with the bypass than with the sleeve, although not significant. Uh, and it may be uh, a little more, more prone, and that may be a reason why we get a little bit better control of diabetes as well. Uh, there are some things you have to be concerned with with the bypass. Smokers should not undergo the bypass because of the risk of ulcers and uh, aspirin products are not really allowed uh, for pain after the bypass because of the risk of ulcers. So if uh, people with the bad arthritis and you take those, maybe a sleeve would be a better, a better option for those patients. But it's a very good operation. Uh, probably more bypasses have been done than the gastric sleeve with very good and very safe um, long-term results. Well, speaking of the sleeve, tell us a little bit more about that procedure. Yeah, the sleeve was actually first done in about 2005. Uh, it was a procedure that a surgeon did because he thought there, the bypass may be a little bit too risky. It was initially planned as a stage procedure to get to a bypass. We take off about two-thirds of the stomach, but you don't do any rerouting, then those patients would lose some weight and come back in six months and be converted to the gastric bypass. As it turns out, they lose about the same amount of weight as the gastric bypass, and so now it's become a standalone procedure you don't have some of the issues that you may that may arise with the gastric bypass, but yet similar weight loss. Well, in your practice, do you consider uh, seeing other patients that have had previous uh, bi uh, bariatric surgery or even uh, procedures for revisions? Yeah, we, we do plenty of revisions uh, for a variety of reasons, whether it be a complication or a failed weight loss, and we'll evaluate them uh, with some studies either in the office or in the radiology suites to determine what may be necessary, but yes, we can definitely do that. Well, talk about the stay in the hospital. I think for patients that are watching this, there a question would be, what is the, the time frame that I'm going to be in the hospital? How long am I going to be down? Right. Most likely it's just an overnight stay, uh, probably 90 plus percent of the time. Occasionally a patient will have a little nausea after surgery from either the anesthesia or the surgery itself and stay an extra day. But once they're tolerating liquids, uh, then they're actually discharged. Usually go back to work within one to two weeks as long as they're not doing manual labor. Uh, but any real strenuous activity needs about, probably about three to four weeks off. Well, that's another question I was going to ask you. What are the restrictions, like so after someone's gone through this type of surgery, what are some of the restrictions that you advise for your patients? Right. Well, the main restrictions are going to be dietary, and they'll meet with our dietitian prior to and after to go over those. But from a physical activity standpoint, uh, we don't want to get a hernia at one of the small incision sites. So we ask them to limit themselves to 20 to 25 pounds lifting, uh, but do want them up and around as much as possible. Uh, beyond that, there's not a lot, a lot of restrictions. Driving within a few days once they're not taking narcotics anymore and the pain's not going to hinder them in an emergency, they can start driving as well. Well, how do you uh, decide exactly which surgery is best for each patient? Because everybody's different, right. right? A lot of people come with their kind of what they want. They've had a family member or a friend who had, has had an operation done well with it. And we kind of let patients choose whatever they're comfortable with. If they don't really know what they want, um, we hate to say it will discourage the lap band because the weight loss is not as reliable. I would say probably 80% of my patients undergo the sleeve gastrectomy because again there's from fewer, fewer side effects with similar weight loss. Uh, the main reason I would recommend the gastric bypass for a patient would be if they're diabetic and have been on insulin for four or five years. We do seem to get a little bit better diabetic control in those kind of chronic diabetics. And so what about other tests? What other tests would need to be uh, performed on a patient before surgery? Well, we'll do an, an upper endoscopy. We'll look at the stomach and, and make sure there's no other pathology there before we operate on it. We'll do just kind of the basic studies, like for any surgery, an EKG, look at their heart, maybe do some more invasive things or uh, like a stress test or even a Doppler or something like that if we have some concerns. 
But beyond that, there's not a whole lot of additional testing that needs to be done. Well, what other prep work goes into uh, what a patient has to do or accomplish or certain goals before you even go into surgery? Well, we don't have a, a specific weight loss goal. I know there's some practices that do that, but there's really no predictive uh, thing that we can do to determine how well somebody's going to do with surgery. We do meet with our dietitian and we do put patients on a two-week pre-op diet. It's a mere replacement plan, but the main goal is not to lose weight. If they lose weight, great, but the main goal is just doing some metabolic changes and actually shrinking the liver, which makes the operation technically easier and therefore safer for the patient. And how do you communicate that with patients, this, this preoperative diet that you're talking about, why that's so important leading up to surgery? It's hopefully messaging through the office. Hopefully they'll hear that from everybody, from, from my nurses, from myself, from our bariatric coordinator. Uh, we also have an exercise therapist and a dietitian who will talk to them about that and hopefully the re repeat messaging we can tell them. And I'll tell them basically just like I told you, this is helping me but it's actually helping you uh, to have a safer operation. Does it help to like kind of altering lifestyles and making some lifestyle changes for patients? Uh, yes, it, again, as you heard in the video with Dr. Pennington, this is just a tool. They're still going to have to make proper food choices even with the surgeries uh, and then uh, proper food choices after surgery as well. And so uh, it, what can patients expect as far as results afterwards? How soon will they see changes in their bodies? Uh, almost immediately. Usually at our two-week post-operative visit, most patients have lost about 20 pounds on average from their first visit. Uh, when I see them back at the six-week visit, it's close to 30 pounds. And then from there, it's usually five to eight pounds a month. A little bit more variable at that point, depending on how much weight they need to lose or how heavy they were when they started. And to talk about the risks uh, that are possibly involved or the complications, what, what do you kind of, I guess, give information that you give to patients going into it just so they have some head knowledge of what to expect? First of all, they, they need to understand this is surgery. Uh, and we don't view this as an easy way out uh, for weight loss. We view it as really the only reliable way, way to lose the weight and keep the weight off long term. But it's surgery, so there's risk for bleeding, infection, or anesthetic risk and we'll try to screen for all those as best we can prior to surgery. With the different operations there are some different risks. Uh, for example with the gastric sleeve a little bit, little bit more prone to getting reflux or heartburn after surgery. Usually that's fairly self-limited. Um, it, it'll typically resolve in three to four months or at least be, get easily controlled medications. Uh, with the gastric bypass there can be a risk of ulcers at the connection where we put the small bowel to the stomach. Um, narrowing of that, which may need to be treated endoscopically. Uh, and then risk of a leak at one of the staple lines is about the same for a gastric bypass and a sleeve, but it's minimal. Uh, it's probably less than 1%. Okay. Uh, explain, expand just a little bit on the, the post-operative care that, that patients need to be aware of. We typically try to have a very close follow-up. Uh, it's been shown that people who do follow up with their physicians uh, more frequently do have better weight loss. And the main thing we're checking, we want to check and make sure they're doing okay. We want to catch if there's any issues uh, early on so we can treat those. We also want to kind of monitor the weight loss, but we'll also be checking the nutritional parameters. I tell patients, you can lose the weight as fast as you want to, or as much as you want to lose, as long as you feel good and your nutritional parameters are, are, are keeping up and you're getting enough nutrition. And we'll check those periodically. A little more stringent with the gastric bypass patients than with the sleeve patients, and we'll check them on both. If someone's watching this and they're thinking that they would like to move forward with this type of surgery, uh, how long does it take once they make a phone call to your office, they get in to see you, how long does it take to, to book surgery and, and move forward with it? Right. Um, getting into the office is, is typically not uh, too difficult. We like for them to watch this seminar or come to one of our uh, seminars live uh, before they come uh, to, the, to the appointment. Why do you think that's important? Well. They need to be informed. Uh, they need to know kind of what, what they're getting into um, prior to surgery. Sometimes the seminar, the live seminars may be better for some patients because they'll hear questions from other patients who, that they may, have thought to, may not have thought to ask and so forth. So we want them to be as informed as possible uh, and be totally on board with going to surgery before they choose to do that. Uh, once we've seen them in the office, really the determining factor is their insurance. If insurance is not an issue, then typically we can have them on the schedule within a month to six weeks after we see them. Some insurances, insurances will, will require a three-month or a six-month diet, which I don't really have any way around that, so if they haven't started that, that may delay the process a little bit for them. Any last bit of information that you would want to share with, with um, potential patients that are watching this and that are really contemplating whether or not this is a good decision for them? Yeah, I would just say just take it seriously, don't go into this lightly. 
uh, know that there will be some challenges right after surgery and may even be some regrets right after surgery. But in the long run, uh, I, I would say 98% of our patients, if not higher, are ecstatic about having gone through this and their only regret is not having done it sooner. Well, on that note, that is important to know. If you are possibly interested in, in bariatric surgery, you're encouraged to uh, call your insurance company and then, of course, call the folks here at Advanced Surgeons PC at Grandview Medical Center for a consultation.